point. You do agree with that, right? This is going to get choppy. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, with what I'm looking at right now, uh, I could see a rally. I could see a rally materialize from here that kind of just um, kind of takes off and heads up there. Let me pull up my chart here real quick. Um, now, right now, I'm still looking at this where we are. There, there's still a possibility that we could see a move lower down to maybe uh, 55, 56,000. Um, but that's a secondary kind of target that I'm looking at. Uh, we've got a pretty good bounce so far uh, from this low that we were looking to get at. So, I mean, if, if you know, if, if we get some movement here, um, I, I think the thing is once we break that all-time high, I think we're above it. I The way my accounts are looking right now, like I said, um, if we're breaking back out there, I'm looking up at around, you know, 98,000 uh, before we get a, a pullback maybe to 80 or 75 uh, and then a push up into the hundreds uh, from there. So seems kind of weird. I mean, you know, for most people, it's going to seem kind of scary and kind of like, what? There's just no way. But um, it's really I mean, that, that, that's just what I'm looking at the moment here. Is that view shared by other uh, chartists, or are you an outlier? Um, I, I think generally, uh, you know, see, see the thing about Elliott Wave Theory, which is what I'm using here to um, to uh, project these targets, to forecast these targets, uh, you know, again, you can look at it differently depending on where you're at, but I'm looking at it based on some larger counts from further back. And where we would have to get to make those um, to make those targets a reality, so like larger degree waves. Uh, and so you know you're going to have some that are going to look at this and they're going to find a reason why it can't. Um, for me, when I'm looking at it, you know I'm just kind of working with the the number with the wave count that I already had, but then kind of looking also at the fact that uh, these flows through the ETFs just continue to be just um, just just huge. You know, again today having huge flows for the ETFs. Now, we're going to have to wait to see what the overall inflows are, but just the flows themselves are pretty big. And for anybody that doesn't really understand, you know, your ETFs usually um, buy once a day uh, after, you know, at, at, after the end of the day, their, their TradFi day. So, you know, if, if we've got a good inflow coming in there from, you know, from the ETFs today, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, after the market closes and they all start doing their buying, you know, I think we could see some um, some decent movement up. Yeah, I mean, the inflows are increasing every day, right? I did not expect to see constant increases. Um, I, I, uh, I mean, once they get on the buy program, they're on the buy program. They're not, they're really not looking at price do, do you think that this kind of move from call it 69 down to 61 gets i'd like you to get into the thought process of, of how these uh funds and the investors assuming they're making these decisions do they plow in heavier at 61 because there's a nine thousand dollar move or do they just do their normal thing and they are disregarding price, unlike us, who's looking for every $5 savings uh, for a lifetime opportunity? I see people, you know, trying to buy 50 grand, 50 grand because their egos. That's the only reason, right? Right? I mean, really. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, just like, just like any other, you know, uh, segment of, uh, you know, investors or traders out there. Uh, you know, you're going to have different levels. And so I, th I think the more, uh, the heavier, the, the bigger their wallets are uh, and the more um, weathered experience they are, uh, I don't think they're looking so much, they're, they're not looking at the day-to-day -day price. They're not going like, oh my God, today it's here. What's it going to be tomorrow thing? You know, they, they've got a longer time frame um, in mind. And so, you know, for them, for those particular uh, investors that kind of get in there or, you know, longer term positional traders, uh, you know, wh whether it was 69 or it's 59, uh, it's right there at the all time high. And, you know, they've got that lo longer time horizon, at least even for the trade. Uh, so they're not going to, I don't think going to make a whole lot of worry about it. Um, but you do have, you know, you still have your, you know, your more inexperienced retail investors and traders and, uh, you know, that's going to give them a lot of really um, emotional feedback <laughs> 
uh, you know, with that drop so quickly there, um, especially if they haven't done their research. I mean, you know, if you do your research and you look back at Bitcoin, you go, well, geez, you know, these are kind of regular occurrences uh, throughout the history of Bitcoin. It would seem that it should tell you that, hey, when you come into the market, you know, you see it and you go, OK, well, that's what we usually get. But again, you know, for most people, unless they're unless they're really experienced, um, you know, it can be a really emotional, uh, you know, time for them and they might hold off a bit. But when we do look at them bigger players, when we do look at the ones that are more experienced, um, I think it's really just, a, you know, whether it's 59 ers they, they'll look at 59 as a gift. Basically, they were expecting to get in around yeah. 69. They'll look at 59 and go, man. I got in, you know, 10, 10 grand lower and, and let's go ahead and go with this. Yeah, some of the responses through X are uh, like blue collar saying there'll be another buy in. There's always going to be another buy in, guys. Like yeah. the, the thing I'm trying to get to that I think Chris can help with better than probably anyone else I have met in this industry related to crypto is to remove the emotion from this trade like there is way too much emotional energy uh in this industry in my opinion if you're going to be a professional investor and many not to offend any of my buddies but many people who are doing podcasts some of some of which are offshore you guys listening to offshore guys they don't pay taxes guys okay they can roll into peppy and roll out and they're at zero tax you can't do that, okay? So you have to make literally 40% more than they make on their moves. I mean, this is a global commodity now. And when somebody has a tax advantage over you, you might want to think about, do you really want to play in that window, right? Because they have zero tax. They can do a trade that they're always going to get in and out before you do, Um so really, like Chris, what, what, what on the emotional side? This is an emotional industry already, right? Full of testosterone and just anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> what do I need to do, man, to like really keep my shit? Because I don't see I don't see uh, Michael Saylor acting like you know freaked out and all panic, right? He's very methodical at this point. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and he's got. And, and part of what helps him at this point is because he's been deploying so much for so long. So um, when it comes to trading, the one thing I always try to help people understand is emotions are going to be there, period, in a sentence. They never actually completely leave 100%. You just learn to deal with them much better. And the only way that you can really do that, it's nothing that there's no special, you know, magical thing you can do. Basically, it comes with one uh, learning correctly how and why markets move the way they do, and then two, seeing it happen multiple times. Uh, and it's, so it's just like anything else you do, you know, um, when you get in there and you do your thing and you say, oh, okay, it is working as expected. You do it again, okay, it is working as expected. And so after you do that a few times, you gain that confidence in there, and that confidence helps alleviate a lot of that fear. But um, the, a lot of the emotion just comes from, you know, just the fear of the unknown. That, that's where our emotions a lot of times come from, you know. Is, is price going to break out or is it going to pull back and we don't know? What, what's the normal? You do a lot of shows with a bunch of big hitters, the Scott Melkers of the world. Um, what, what's the, you know, the trade five guys? I mean, the Danish Dr. Danish on Mario, who's like, be careful, Bitcoin's going to wreck everyone. What, what are those trad five guys? It's hilarious. He says, be careful with Bitcoin. And then he puts on a big ETH position. And it's really like I've never seen anybody more negative on Bitcoin. It's almost like he is a, I mean, I've almost stopped watching this space because it's so much negativity. Is that changing in the trad five community or is it getting heavier as price goes against their thesis um I, you know some people well people in general you know we have a lot of time letting go right we have a lot of time going okay maybe i'm wrong um and i'm sure you've seen that you know you've had this great career a long time dealt with a lot of people i'm sure you've seen it day in and day out and you know when it comes to the markets it's not any different except um you know the, the, a lot of the people in the market uh, you know, especially of, of, that, of that type, you know, they've got a lot behind them. So I, I don't know. May, maybe it's the money itself. 
uh, you know, having that bigger stack behind you that makes you kind of stick with your position. Uh, but I just think humans in general just have a difficult time kind of admitting they were wrong, um, you know, and kind of being humble. And, it, you know, the longer you're sitting here kind of fighting Bitcoin, uh, I think the more entrenched you become. Um, you know, you, you look at Peter Schiff, for instance, and <laughs> I mean, his tweets they just get, you know, worse and worse about Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, at what point do you finally say, if you're one of these guys, at what point do you finally say, hey, listen, I'm going to stop fighting this, you know, what's happening here. And finally, you know, just kind of give in and say, OK, maybe this is something. But, um, I, you know, again, I, I think it comes all down to, you know, just what makes us human beings, emotions, pride, stuff like that. And, you know, most people, again, are just not very humble. They're not willing to accept that uh, that things are wrong or uh, different, maybe, than what they thought. Yeah, I think it's really important when I'm playing in a space. Uh, you know, once you take a position, I mean, your comment on 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 uh, micro strategies. Hey, their position's so large now; they just got to keep going. I mean, there is a point of no return play, but they have. I mean, he. It's not just Sailor, right? It's he has convinced his entire board and all his shareholders. He invited his shareholders to leave to sell their stock if they didn't like this strategy, gave them plenty of time to get out. They will now all be regretting that. But they have a whole shareholder base, a board, who has accepted this strategy. Um, I mean, my hat's really off to him because I think he saved his company. Uh, having said that, you know, he is, he, him and his board are highly biased at this point. Um, but they're not emotional right? They're behaving every day they're buying. If, if I can learn anything from that strategy, do what they do. If I don't, like he's got more intel than anyone. He knows people are coming into this ETF. He knows probably what volume. He's not accelerating his purchases. Every day he's buying. Um, I think that will prove to be, although the less sexy, it will prove to be the most sexy exit uh, i mean i wish i would have done that i'd love to do a show one day with you on a, on youtube actually chris and go through dollar cost averaging especially men i think we hate the dollar cost average because we want to hit the hit a home run or a single dollar cost averaging man it's just a no-brainer i have been an idiot uh not to do it that way now maybe i didn't have the opportunity to do it that way in fact because most people don't have a bunch of cash sitting around every month Let's bring some peeps up. Uh, I know you guys have all been, you know, watching this, uh, what I call the World Series of all sports combined into one that goes on 24-7. I have no idea why people gamble, or go to casinos, or watch sports shows. When you can do this, this is the greatest sports show in the world with some awesome athletes, many we haven't even met yet. So what you got, Blue? Gary, Chris, how are you, gentlemen? What an exciting last 24 to 48 hours, isn't it? This is beautiful. And uh, I've been trying to listen to the narrative of the room. See, I try to be a crypto investor that has multiple gears. I think that's necessary. And my opinion on the question you asked to eliminate emotion is to stay strong in your conviction. I mean, the time I've spent with you, I've been able to at least calculate your buy-ins and your dollar cost averaging throughout this process we call X. And I think you're doing it right. This 14.5% correction, this is completely normal. It's actually softer than, than traditional market back in 2021. And as we stand now, we're about 8.5% away from the all-time high. So none of this bothers me at all. I agree with you, and I think that could be something for those that are interested in a long-term perspective here is to have that dry powder to make those phone calls so you can attempt to get a moment like this uh probably not going to hit it on a limit you're probably going to have to smash it on a mid-market buy to get it to execute let it fluff into your average you'll see that it'll transact into multiple trades for it to eat up your value um, but but these are the opportunities we wait for I think this is completely normal. I'm actually excited, and I love that you mentioned that this is the big game, because for me, this is the big game. Everything we've been training for, 
all the education you have. It's the moment to apply it as now. And that's kind of why I don't watch anybody on YouTube. Um, I'll probably watch you, Gary. I'm pretty excited to see that you're doing broadcasts. But for me, my best scenario for my personal strategy is self-comprehension. And I don't like a lot of other people's concepts or ideas that kind of mess with my foundation of my custom home, if you know what I mean. Just because I'm a, I'm a comfortable investor. So this is great. I've been able to read it live, play by play. That's actually what I enjoy is live volume flow. I don't really do long-term projections, but I believe the writing's on the wall. This little purchase, this little dip, there'll be some more opportunities, and I believe it'll take place before the big rip. Traditionally, we have the end of August, um, you know, April, May, selling May, go away. I think things are going to be a little different. Um, because you can already see them pushing to try to find different individuals to give exposure to. For me, that indicates that they're preparing to absorb any circulation that comes into their hands, right? Uh, this is another aspect of Bitcoin a lot of people don't talk about. This is the moment that a lot of dirty Bitcoin is going to be made into a shiny ETF. Um, you know, I mean, some expound, of these yeah. expound on that because I don't think the audience knows what you're talking about. I think I do, but why don't you expound on that for for a bit? Well, we have a couple different layers, right? I'll go with the one that's more factual, and then I'll go with my tinfoil hat perspective. Um, but the factual perspective is just as fiat has been used for things that are nefarious, so has Bitcoin. And because there's such a drive, there's such a need, and the regulation through decentralized hasn't happened yet, you're going to see a lot of people off-ramp into the hands of the ETFs because this is their, this is their touchdown. This was their goal. This is their exit strategy. And they get a chance to dodge the bullet from having anything they possess be black flagged, a.k.a. their wallet, right? Um, the other so perspective... You basically say you, you put the coin back into the ETF and then it gets cleaned up. Let's say a coin was a Russian oligarch who was a bad guy. It's on the, it's on the uh, OFAC list, right? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, 100%, Gary. It's yeah. a complete yeah. free-for-all. They are so frantic for supply right now, they're not you, even you, questioning you to, where it comes from. You know, you have to expect it of the uh, 19 million, 19.6 that are out there. A good 12 million of them have touched every crime. I mean, this was a bunch of, you know, gangsters, not gangsters, but, you know, roller polers. I mean, players, party guys. Uh, I'm sure most of the, those coins were tainted in the early days, right? They hit, they've hit wallets that might not be perfect today for sure. I mean, that's the problem, right? You could do a coin 10 years ago, seven years ago, and then they changed the rules. Uh, two years into it, and all of a sudden you're holding a Russian oligarch's Bitcoin. You don't know it. I mean, how would a guy know it? Absolutely, Gary. Without any type of uh, um, on-chain tracking forensics uh, programs or, or software, things of that nature, you really wouldn't. And by the time they find out, I doubt they're going to rewind Right? They're not going to go back and say, wait a second, we have to take back part of your holdings because it used to be in the wallet of so-and-so. Um, the tinfoil hat perspective is that everyone in the crypto community has at least believed that these hedge funds have been accumulating through a third party prior to any ETFs. Um, there's always been a suspicion. So this is the tinfoil hat part, and I just want to put that disclaimer out there. So we've always at least had the idea that they have been accumulating this whole time. Well, what better than to sell to yourself after your accumulation at a very low position? It's just kind of like a transfer of what they need, right? Yeah, this, is, this has come up a couple of times, Chris. I don't know if you're hearing any of this, but, uh, you know, there's this theory that the boys club on Wall Street have been, which... Look, if I'd have been part of the club, I'd have been front running since day one. Um, that you know the 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 good old boys got a nod, which would make sense, right, Chris? I mean, this does happen in markets once you start hearing what's going on. But what's the possibility that we went from eighteen to forty and just had a middleman involved? 
would that be interesting? If this was at 60 or 50, the price is literally, okay, it's really 25 plus 25 on uh, buddy fees. And now we really have the real market. All the volume's actually in getting into the ETFs now. Uh, like, And that would take us up another level. My point being is, that, hey, there's no premium in here yet. It, literally no premium. We've just paid everybody to uh, make sure they're all happy got big fat wallets and they can continue uh, I mean I would have done that yeah I mean sure you know I you know I, th I think when people um, I think this all goes to the whole idea of you know market manipulation and all these things and I, I think what happens is people get really on the far end of that um, and they start thinking all oh, you know that everything by the market is completely controlled um, but you know, you know, by by some by a few people, and that isn't really the way it is. But yeah, you know, along that lines, when you're talking about okay, maybe we've got you know these these trad five guys and these Wall Street guys kind of coming in there early and doing that. I mean, sure, you know, you're going to have some, I think, that do that. But do we have it to the level we do now? I I don't I don't think that maybe we've had such a significant. I, I guess I would be kind of surprised if we really had such a significant um, entrance. Uh, I, I do believe there are probably some in there, but the idea that that Bitcoin, which has been so just kind of misunderstood and thrown to the side and ignored and vilified um, so heavily, um, I, I don't think that it's I don't think it's probably like a huge thing that that we'd have to think about. There's always people, you know. There's always people that are going to see the the potential, you know, just like in business. You always have somebody out that's going to see the potential, and they're going to get in early, and they're going to do their thing. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I think Bitcoin, just in general, has been treated like that redheaded stepchild, if that, um, by by you know the the Wall Street and TradFi guys, just in general. So I don't know that we've maybe got any significance of that in there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it makes a difference now. We're at the price we're at now. It's pretty clear. It's be hard to front run this thing now. Uh, but there was a little four-month period there that would have been very lucrative. I think David had his hand up, and Chris, of course, if you have any comments here, just bounce in. If you want to change the subject, let's do that, too. Um, we've had, what, a $20,000 move in price up and down today, maybe sixteen, and getting wider, right? These spreads are getting wider every day almost now. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, again, um, Definitely nothing unexpected, um, just in general for Bitcoin. Um, it's it's a good little move. Uh, it definitely kind of clears the way for some movement up. So yeah, let's see what let's see what David's got to say here. Maybe. <laughs> you there, David? David's picking it up at sixty while he still can. <laughs> Let's talk. Right. Hey, let's talk oil. I mean, not oil. Well, maybe oil. Let's talk gold and silver. Gold and silver moved today, huh? For the first time, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they've been doing this little crazy thing, this sideways thing. Um, let me pull up my chart here real quick. But uh, man, you know, I was I've been sitting there, kind of looking at it, and just kind of waiting for it to, you know, to maybe do something a little bit more significant than this sideways that it had been doing since. Um, since it printed that all-time high back in uh, beginning of December. And then we just kind of, you know, we dropped on down uh, to that swing low down there on uh, December 12th, and then we've just been sideways, man. Uh, and then we finally got the breakout. We finally got the breakout. And, uh, you know, we're just, God, I think we're just about there. Let me look at my chart here real quick. Futures, what are we at there, 21.50 and a half, 21.52. Yeah, we're just like, two bucks off the uh off the all-time high there but you know again uh we went sideways for you know a couple of months there uh kind of accumulating there and here we go heading out and you know no surprise no surprise um but uh you know we were wondering if maybe we were going to get a bit more pullback before it happened but uh, no we didn't well, it's a good move it's a good move i've been talking to quite a few people in my conversations uh, even normal people, like I had an hour call today with the Digital Chamber of Commerce. I didn't even know there was a Digital Chamber of Commerce. There is, and they're actually they're going to be the lobby arm 
I'm going to actually support them. Uh, in fact, all you guys are going to support them too once I figure out what they're doing. But their job, remember we talked about how bad the marketing is on Bitcoin because you don't have an organization. Their job is to lobby and to offset all the bullshit, the noise, the Elizabeth Warren, hey, this is an energy consumption product. It's bad. It's, a, you know, for for crime and stuff like that. But um, in chatting with her, I brought up gold and silver. And because we need to use analogies for the people in Washington that they can understand instead of trying to force them to understand blockchain and self-custody and Satoshi Moshi and all this stuff. Like we, we just, we're just like a bunch of founders that don't know how to sell our story. Like I know so many founders cannot sell their own story. And the reason is they're just too close to their baby. Like they know everything about this baby and they want to tell you how their bowels move. And like you don't really care how their bowels move and that they're perfect intestines. All you care about is the price moving and that you're protected, right? So um, anyway, this is my point. Um, I bring up gold. She's like, hey, you know what? I was in the gold store the other day bringing in some gold. I'm like, oh, really? And in, ta in doing that, I asked the gold dealer, hey, uh, are you having people come in here and sell gold? He said, oh, yeah. We, 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 it, it's been a rush. And they are selling gold for Bitcoin. They're literally saying, hey, I'm out of this. I'm moving into Bitcoin. I've heard this now multiple times, and I'm beginning to hear serious long-term gold bugs really review their own thesis about gold now that they have Bitcoin available to them. It, are you seeing, hearing that, and could that be driving some of this price? Yeah, no, I, you know, I get the same thing. I've got you know, friends um, that have been you know, collecting their gold and silver uh, forever and a day, um, and it's just you know, the... The price, I mean, you know, the first thing is, I don't care who you are, the price narrative is always what gets, you know, what gets your interest. Uh, that's why, you know, retail tends to FOMO in at all-time highs, right? Uh, it's the price. But um, when it comes to gold, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that. I'm, I'm not, I've, I've got a few who are, I think, probably pretty convinced to go all in with Bitcoin from their gold and silver. Um, but most of the ones I've talked to so far are at least, uh, you know, kind of putting in, um, some feelers, you know, they're putting in like, you know, like 20% of their gold or the silver or whatever, 30%, something like that, which is actually quite a bit. Um, but they're not, they're not 100% committed yet. Um, yeah, but that's you know, big. That's big, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. We've been talking about one or two and you're saying, oh, gold guy just moves 20% of his position. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. But real quick, I wanted to touch upon something you just said a minute ago about the narrative and, I am in so much agreement with that. I've been talking for a long time uh, about the way in which we, you know, market by speaking about Bitcoin and, you know, this idea that you can, uh, you know, you can custody your own money. You can be your own bank. The problem with that, um, as somebody who's done quite a bit of studying, uh, you know, uh, educational wise, you know, in, in people and, and psychology and stuff like that, is that people don't want to self custody, they don't want to be their own bank. They don't want to provide their own protection. It's why when when um, uh, nine eleven happened, and man, at the time I said, man, oh man, we're about to see you know the federal government usurp a whole bunch of power under the guise of protecting us, and that's exactly what happened because people don't want to protect themselves, right? So the government says, okay, well we're going to protect you, and everybody's like, rah rah, yeah, go ahead and protect me. Um, and then when they do that, of course, you know, they can overstep and, and grab more power in the way that they do it. But, it, you know, it's, it's, that same, it's that same thinking. People don't want to be their own security guard, you know. They don't want to be their own bank. So I, I think those are the wrong narratives to kind of really educate people on it. I think people might get to that, you know, eventually. But I think to get them in, I think we need something much more mainstream, um, which is what you were saying there. Uh, so I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, just because it has that feature, and I like, I don't talk about this particular feature for a reason. Uh, why would I want to poke the largest 
military industrial complex in the world and their eyeballs over and over and over and over for years, dude, screaming in video cameras, we are going to displace you. Like, it's stupid. Okay, it's a ridiculous strategy. There's no upside in it. First off, you've alerted the bear. And if you want to be like, you know, our current administration, you know, blow some pipes, file embargoes. I mean, we can't do that. So we tell everybody how we're going to punch him in the face and knock him out. The other thing is, to Chris's point, most people don't even want to have this responsibility. Okay? And the very wealthy, they most certainly will not take this risk. Okay? For them, it's greater risk to hand out wallets to all their children. I mean, you're not even thinking about how this works, right? Like, what about their trust? And, uh, man, there's just so many implications. And that's before you even get to the technology. Does it work? Am I sure there's not a bug on that little piece of wallet ledger material? I mean, really? Um, We had Facebook and Instagram go down for five hours today. I mean, I'm not sure anybody has this all figured out. So... Um, uh, man, I can, I can, I can custody with fidelity. I don't think fidelity is going to go out of business. Okay. And I would rather someone in than someone on the sidelines just because the thesis was you have to store your own, you have to walk around like you're a sovereign country. Okay. That's re- It's just ridiculous. Okay. So, um, th- that's two fronts, but I think the first front where we're telling countries that we want to take over i just there's so many other cool things to talk about bitcoin than to even bring that one up right that's my nuclear option right that's my gun under the bed you know with the magnet on it or whatever i do um but it's going to get sold very well chris how's wall street going to sell it oh man they they (laughs) They're going to sell it the way they sell everything else, They're, except with, you know, higher returns, you know, uh, shorter periods of time. I mean, uh, you know, if you're on Wall Street, you know, th- that's what you're doing. You know, you're, you're selling the narrative of returns. You're selling the, you know, the narrative. Now, you know, the, the only thing you're going to come against there is this idea of, okay, well, um, how risky is it? You know, that, that's, I think that's the only narrative that they really have to kind of work out. Um, really, but you know, we, with, with the Bitcoin ETF being approved now and coming in here and showing volume just consistently again, over a month and a half we're in now and we're getting volume around the same we did on the first day. It's just, you know, we're not trailing off. And, um, so, you know, if, if you're wall street and you're looking at, it, you're going, okay, well, there's something here. Uh, and, and at that point it just, and, and then you've got people, you know, like Michael Saylor going out there, who's constantly talking about it. And I'll be honest, I was one of the biggest, uh, probably one of the biggest Michael Saylor haters at first, uh, because, you know, I'd, I'd followed his, um, his high flying move to the top of the dot com bubble and almost the destruction of the company at the bottom. And then through 2015, 16, 18, before he started really getting into Bitcoin, you know, his company, which had been around, you know, as long as it did was getting left behind by all the, you know, all his competitors until he started buying Bitcoin. And so, like you said earlier, you know, you think that probably saved his company. I agree with you on that. Oh, but, for sure. But, you know, the big thing about that is now you've got this big, heavy, you, this guy is, is walking the walk. He goes out there right. he doesn't say, listen, here's this idea I have. You need to listen to him. He says, listen, here's this idea I have. By the way, we've got, you know, three, four billion dollars already invested in it and we're continuing to buy more. Yeah, no, he's become a synthetic miner, man. Yeah, he, is a, he wants to be a development company. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna do what the energy guys sit in the middle. I mean, he's in an unbelievable position. I'll tell you the other big player, the other big winner out of this thing, dude. While we're just talking shit, um, I think Grayscale, the crap Grayscale got, they're gonna end up keeping their one and a half percent. The price is gonna quadruple, so they're back. They're literally making look six percent on the twenty-five. Uh, I think they're the biggest winner in this, and they didn't shift their fees very much. And, and they're probably going to offer, 
you know, some kind of super auditable or, you know, they just have some tools that other people don't have. Um, do, do, do you think that's a possibility that, that uh, you know, everybody underestimated the, the grayscale play? Oh, I do. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 everybody underestimates everything. And, and grayscale yeah. was the, the big thing to hate, right? It was the big thing to hate on. It was the big thing to laugh at. Um, but when they're like, hey, listen, we're going to keep this 1.5% fee, even though everybody gets these cheap fees, you should have stopped and said, wait a minute. If they're doing that, there's a reason. Yeah, that's right. They've got something going on. Otherwise, what, 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 what's the deal, right? I mean, you go ahead and drop it with everybody else, and you try to keep as much of that assets under management as you can. Dude, the rest of the people sitting in that fund, I mean, you got to confront. Uh, the price has moved. Well, I mean, we're, f you know, $50 off its low, right? Uh, the tax consequences of people moving that today like it's got to be coming to a stop right you don't want to have that unless it's the guys that know they're going to have a capital gains they might or a capital loss this year they might be selling some of it does not make sense to pay the tax to save 1.3 percent when the freaking price is going up 10 percent a day i mean just yeah no sense. yeah i agree completely and in I'll tell you what, go ahead and pull somebody up here. Let me go ahead and uh, put this thing on. I've got the long guys right outside. Yeah, Blue, come on up, buddy. You can you can bounce in. Then if anybody else also, I don't know if anybody's seen this. Jason Williams just said that uh, a wallet mined, uh, Bitcoin mined in 2010, dumped into the market today, suggesting that was part of the contribution to the uh, price correction at the at near the high. So I don't know if that's true or not, but... Interesting. Uh, absolutely, Gary. I mean, there's something pretty significant today uh, besides just the small retracement in Bitcoin. With just three of the major stables, we did a quarter of a trillion dollars in volume, with almost 200 billion of that being in Tether. So there's still a lot of buying power in the crypto world pre-ETFs, right? I mean, they're not using stables to acquire this. Um, not likely. Um, so when we look at the power and force that they bring to the table, we have to remember that they're replacing a power and force that was here. That's why we made it to 69,000 in 2021. So it's really interesting to witness this live as both sides collide with different goals and different narratives. And, and, and that's what I'm really trying to compute right now. Like, I, I have conviction. Um, I travel in all aspects of the swamp that we call uh, crypto and DeFi. Uh, but the main goal is very similar to Jason's. It's to acquire more Bitcoin. Um, and at times, I am gambling with that uh, tax occurrence, seeing whether or not the returns will be beneficial and obviously with it still being in like the first quarter or something of that nature um, that little window for someone of my abilities is about to close very quickly um, so i'm just like anyone else um, jason said i should rip the copper wires out of my wall and buy more bitcoin you know i've thought about it i'm not quite there yet i did go to home depot to get the sledgehammer but yeah it, it's interesting there's so much movement taking place uh, not only within stables, uh, but with wallets that are awakening. Um, they have a stable that launched last year, I believe, in like end of June. Um, it was um, linked to a Hong Kong hedge fund. It's FDUSD. It's going to be used to replace Binance's BUSD. That's already surpassed um, Coinbase's um, um, USDC which is pretty amazing. I've been watching it this whole time, slowly creep, billion dollars in volume, two billion, four billion, now it's in the teens. It's almost doubled USDC. So there's a lot taking place in the digital world what, as well as traditional again? finance. Um, FD, USD. Okay. So Binance's BUSD is supposed to, I believe, go offline here in March. Um, so they're going to do away with that stable. And this should be and was intended to be its replacement. Interesting. Interesting. I heard some stuff on Tether. Tether's a whole conversation. 
Um, man, this is a big industry, you know. It's really hard to keep up with everything. Like, I'm not a dumb, dumb guy. This is a hard... This is... See, and it's a bit of a problem for the new investor. Uh, imagine somebody's been here for six months. This is going to be a question for Chris. Chris, I'm... Uh, 40 years old, I just got divorced, and my my wife left me, uh, you know, I got a million dollars, and uh, my settlement, I've got to take care of the kid for the rest of my life, but got a million dollars, and I've been watching Bitcoin, I really want to invest this in Bitcoin, I just don't know the entry point, I mean, I just saw it move from 69 down to 61, what should I do? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the difficult thing. You know, that's, that's the big question. That's the emotional trigger uh, for people trying to get in, you know. And, you know, I think you just kind of, you've just got to look at it and go, okay, you know, do your research on it. Go just like you would do with any other investment and say, okay, you know, is this something that fits what I'm looking for? You got to, you know, I, I think as people we have to figure out, you know, what is it that makes us who we are as the traders or investors? You know, what are our short, our mid, our long-term wealth and financial goals? How risk-adverse or risk-tolerant are we? Um, you know, how much time do we actually have to devote to whether it's trading or investing? And, you know, you have to really go through all that. And you have to be honest with yourself, which as human beings, again, uh, we're not very good at. But you absolutely have to because once you figure that out, then you can go, okay. So, first of all, does this thing even fit what, what I, you know, what I'm looking for and the time frames I'm looking for. And then you got to go, okay, well, if it does, how should I be approaching it? You know, should I be a trader? Should I be a positional trader? Should I be a day trader? Should I be an investor? Um, and a lot of people, honestly, should be investors uh, because they don't have the time or, you know, the, the, that they want to go to be able to do it, right? To learn it and then to get in there to actually perform it every day. So, you know, when you're in that position and you're going, man, well, what the heck do I do? I think you got to figure that first out, you know, that stuff out first. And then, oh, my God, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> got these long guys right outside here. Um, but anyway. No, but it's, not, it's not too horrible, man. If, but oh, if you not? want to pop off. No, no, it's not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. Um, okay. All right. Don't, think, don't be. Do it. Yeah, no, but I, I like this is a big problem, right? Like, because yeah. people aren't going to be prepared for this volatility. I don't think any. I don't think I am prepared for it. My those what the, the markets always taught me to. Hey, man, prepare for what you can't prepare for. Uh, and I think if we ever had an uh, a market that could be a beast like Godzilla, like freaky, scary. It would be this one, the, the dynamics of it in so many ways. Yeah, no, I agree exactly, you know, 100% with you. And, 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 you know, and that, again, kind of puts into that whole, well, you know, I can't seem to pull the trigger, you know. price And then price goes up, and then you're like, oh, well, I should buy, but what if it drops down again, you know. And so that's why I think you really, especially with Bitcoin, I think you got to look at the, the history of Bitcoin and then just go, okay, look. You know, we've got this great history that shows that we continue to make exponential returns. And, you know, while it's not guaranteed, you know, to, to you know, past performance is not guaranteed to repeat in the future. You know, it's, it's the same way you do with any other asset, but you just have to get to the, you know, the acceptance, the emotional acceptance that there's going to be these potential bigger drawdowns. Um, and, and there's just no easy way to it. There is no magic word. There is no, you know something that somebody can eat or drink or do that's going to make them that much less emotional about it. Uh, again, I think the only thing that really, really takes out that emotion, you know, to some extent is understanding how and why markets move the way they do. And then, you know, just experience with it, seeing it play out over and over and over again. And that kind of builds that, that, um, that, that internal resolve that kind of beats out the emotion a lot of times. Yeah, so, but I still have this million dollars, right? And I need to, I need to know how to invest it. Do I do all of it? Do I stage it in like in $100,000 blocks, take 10 months to do it? I mean, is this market going to run away from me so much? 
or give me so many opportunities and pullbacks like this. Like, I don't think this is a big pullback, right? Um, that That's, see, to me, I know what the, I mean, I think I know what your answer should be. Uh, but what would your answer be to your, you know, your 40-year-old buddy that comes looking for advice on that particular question? He has no debt. He's not a gambler. You know, he just wants to work for a living. Um, he makes a decent living enough to take care of his kid, um, and his obligations under his deal. Right. So how does he buy in? Does he whack it in or ease it in? Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to tell him is, listen, man, we're in the U S I am not an RIA, so I can't tell you what you should do specifically. Uh, otherwise I end up going to federal prison. However, in general, <laughs> um, I think there's a good chance the you know, price runs away from you coming up here pretty quickly. Um, you're going to get pullbacks along the way, but emotionally, I think they're going to be probably higher than what you're going to want to hold. And so I think, you know, if you're going to step in with a couple of different tranches rather than just kind of coming in all at once, I think you limit the number of those um, because you're not going to be sitting in front of your computer looking at the four hour pullback, even if it is $5,000, which by the way, between now and $100,000, there's a big difference in, you know, a $5,000 pullback. So, you know, percentage-wise. So, I, you know, I think you say, listen, you kind of get you in there. Um, and if you're not, you know, feeling good enough to kind of put it all in right away, you know, may, maybe you look at, uh, at $10,000 movements, you know. So you kind of put some in here. You put some in $10,000 up. You put some in $10,000 above that. Uh, but you keep them, you know, easy because the biggest thing for people that are coming in that don't know what they're doing and they don't have the time and they don't want to learn all this. They just want to get their money in if they're going to do it, you know, over time is that they don't have the time to do that. Right. And so you just you just make it easy for them. You say, listen, OK, so every, you know, whatever it happens to be here, uh, you know, coming in, what is it, 60, 60,000 or so right now. So you could probably you could even say, you know, from this level, 20 percent up. So, you know, it gives you, what, 12000 And then you just say, okay, 12000 and then 12000 and then 12000 like that. But I think there's a good chance price runs away from them. And I wouldn't be, you know, if you've got the money to put in there, you know, I'd be more interested in putting in closer to now than really stretching it out over the next year or something. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm with you, man. Uh, if you don't need the money... And look, I'm never going to be comfortable pulling the trigger on a hundred thousand dollar position. It's always scary. It's mostly ego, actually, because the fear part is irrational. If you really think about the fear part, I mean, you're arguing with yourself or someone else about if you were buying Bitcoin itself, a nine thousand dollar decision, one Bitcoin. You're going, okay, I really want this asset class, but I might let it go for nine grand. And I know people that pay nine grand a month for Country Club. Now, I'm not one of them, okay, but I find them boring and overpriced. But, you know, it's just not a big move. And we're, but we most certainly, Chris, are going to have 5% days forever, right? As the price goes up, well, not 5%, but 2 and 3% corrections in the future will be big swings. I yeah, yeah, in absolute we, dollar terms, yeah. Mini ball, yeah, right? Do you agree with that? We have not seen the ball that we're going to see? We haven't seen the what? The volatility. Um, I, I think we've got a lot of volatility ahead of I do. And, and the, the, I think what you're hitting on there is probably um, really important, you know, because, again, we're human beings. And... Um, you know, it, it may be, again, like I was kind of saying there, you know, 5% at, you know, 60,000 or 50,000 is different than 5% at 100,000. And so, you know, as human beings, we kind of look at that total dollar figure when you start getting up there, um, especially, again, if you're not used to, you know, spending at that level, right? You know, if you're not used to just running out there and dropping 100 grand on something, then seeing you know, uh, five or $10,000 drop out of that in a matter of minutes or an hour or something. That's tough. It's tough emotionally, uh, to deal with that. And so, 
Yeah, you know, and, and then as we, and heaven forbid we keep going up higher, you know, 200,000, 500,000. I mean, all of a sudden you're talking, what, 50,000, 25,000 and dropping it, you know, in a matter of an hour or something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, we've already, just since we started this, we're up 1,300. <laughs> we're at 63,418, folks. The way it we works. we got Chris Ings <laughs> with us. Uh Blue Collar, Crypto, Angel. Hey, you guys retweet the space. We're the second largest space in X right now. Uh, we've got Dr. Jeff Ross speaking in another room. He's outsized us, and he's a brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, but let's get this room smashed up to be the number one digital asset room while we got Chris because he's full of alpha, man. Chris, any other markets you want to talk about? You want to think about doing that while Blue Collar's got, collar got his hand up? Actually, uh, actually, can we get Crypto Ambassador? I know he's, his hand's going yeah. up a couple of times. I think it's just have out or something. I don't have a lot more PC. All right. I don't um, have my hand. I just did this. <laughs> good evening, Gary. I think um, Chris asked that I speak. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me, Chris? Can you hear me, Gary? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Um, GM, everyone. Um, basically... I just came to, you know, throwing my quota ahead when you were talking about some Bitcoin levels and all that. So I sort of dropped some charts in the comment session, you know, just to still um, bring perspective to the market. And uh, everything I said and everything I charted is actually playing out. I think what was happening to Bitcoin right now is just that normal impulse, uh, you know, liquidity takeoff. It's normal, right? There has to be a retracement either way. It, 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 it either happens now or it happens anytime. I, but I knew it was going to happen today, though. But uh, the question now is where do we move from here, right? So for those of us in my community here in Nigeria, I've been telling them, I think right now the money is going to the alt, right? I think the money is redistributing to the alt. As If you look at your chart right now, you see the BTC dominance has already topped off and, you know, is retracing now. And now, so money is being moved to the alt. And if you check most alt right now, they've literally gone uh, and um, touched major support levels. Uh, I'm looking at utility alt for the time being. Yeah, utility alt like INJ. If that's not a financial advice, though, uh, um, in Nigeria, we don't have the I, IRO, whatever you guys have out there. But you know, but over here we just we just say that we don't give financial advice. It's just a normal thing, right? But then I'm I'm looking at a couple of a couple of um, utility alts. I'm looking at Lido, Lido Finance. You know, the staking uh, platform for most DeFi projects and all that, right? Now, uh, still speaking on BTC, where do I see BTC in the coming days? I think personally, I think uh, I wouldn't be wrong if I said at this point. BTC begins to cool off, right? Begins to cool off. I don't think we are going to see that almighty push up beyond the just created all time high. Now, this all time high that was created today is totally insignificant compared to where we wanted to get to. But then at the same time, it's still significant because this is almost the same top as the last all time high. And it was necessary that a retracement come from this level. So there, I'm, I'm going to be mentioning some couple of BTC levels I'm looking at. So please, uh, if, you, if you could pay attention. Uh, so 64,032, right? That's the figure I'm looking at for a resistance right now on BTC. I think if BTC doesn't break 64,032, we may be going down to 57,517.25. Yes, that's where I am um, putting a major trend support. And that's why I have a major trend support. Uh, if I don't if I, I don't think I'm, 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 I'm permitted to share uh, my chart on the Jumbotron. Am I permitted to do that, Gary? Is, is it possible? So probably there could be a visual representation of what I'm saying. Is, I don't know if it's possible. Chris, are He's you asking me? if you can share something on the Jumbotron. Yeah, um, I'll be honest you. with you. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> So uh, I need to figure that no, out. I, I, no, he's asking you if it's okay. Yeah, if he, can, it. He, can, he can do it. You can, oh, you can okay. put it up, man. You can yeah, put it up. Let's see what it is. It's okay. on Bitcoin, right? It's on Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 it's on Bitcoin. It's a chart on Bitcoin. Here. So I'm doing that right now. I just did. I just did. So I just posted the chart on Jumbotron. Now, if you follow the pattern that I just put it, posted, that's where I started shorting Bitcoin from the exact top. That exact top. That's where I started shorting from. 
and it was so freaking accurate. It was so freaking accurate. And that's that's why I'm still saying that all the levels that I've mapped out are still going to play out, right? I'm looking at 64032 for a resistance, local resistance right now. And then I'm looking at 57,517 for a major support. At 57,517, I think the reaction on BTC at that level would tell me if we are going to go back to the just created all time high, or if we're going to go back down to the levels of 50,998 and 52,931. Sorry for the way I pronounce my figures, right? I know it probably may not be conversant with how you guys pronounce your figures, right? But we, we love picking our figures one after the other over here. Uh, we're I reside in. I'm in Nigerian. I'm in Nigeria, and, uh, and uh, so so this is just my my take on Bitcoin. And I want to say thank you, Gary, for you know letting me speak up on this. Thank you for bringing me up to you know share these ideas with you guys. And I'm will, I'm, I'm I'm open to to any other person's view on this Bitcoin matter. You know, uh, I literally would love to hear someone you know probably give me his own opinion based on the chat. Right? I love I love speaking based on chart. I like facts. I like figures. I like drawings. I like lines. Right. So if you're gonna if, if, if there's gonna be a reaction, I prefer it be based on chart. And psychologically speaking, yeah, psychologically sp speaking, right now, where we are in this market, a lot of persons are, are expecting us to okay. Uh, we've seen a deep. This is the regular buy the deep, and we move on. I don't think this is the regular buy the deep. For me personally speaking, I don't think this is the regular buy the deep because, like I said. When it comes to the market, where majority of traders, where majority of retailers are heading to, I tend to go the opposite direction, and that's how I win. Because I always say this, if you approach the market this way, you literally know where to place your entries, your exits, you know when to stay, you will know when to leave, you will know when to stay away from the market entirely, right? The market, let me, let me just take this example, right? Let's say we have a thousand traders in the market. Is an, is an example. Now, if you're the market maker, in quotes, if you're the market maker and 60% of these persons or 70% of these persons have opened a trade on long and 30% have opened a trade on short and you're the one with the money to pay these guys, who would you rather pay? Would you rather pay the, the majority many or would you rather pay the minority few? That's how I approach the market. I think this is literally the ABC psychology to, to um, trading this market. If you literally would see the market this way, you would know where, when to put your money and where to put your money. Right. So thank you very much, um, Gary, once again. Like I said, I'm open to questions and um, you know other suggestions as to um, the chart I just posted. Do you, uh, do you have any of those? Did you do any fibs on a longer time periods, like the four-hour daily or even weekly? The fibs are a really good way to kind of judge where the market could go. So I was just asking. I noticed these are hourly charts. Yeah, I, I, I sort of looked at the, this. This is both the four hour. Uh, now, this chart I posted was the one I used for my trading. But before I trade, I love to do my top-down analysis. So I start from the weekly down to the daily, down to the four hour, and then down to the one hour, and then lower time frame. So this chart is all in comprising, right? It's, it's all in comprising. It, it combines every possible angle from every possible time frame yeah yeah so what he's saying though like what so you, went, you mean it you mean it, you mean it's an amalgamation of all time frames that's, if it right. is then i'd love you to show i'd love to see the weekly because see this is a good case chris correct me if i'm wrong where 90 percent of the people listening here i hope 90 percent of you guys are investors and not day traders but nonetheless um, in my opinion, I have no interest in this chart. Like I am a long-term investor. So I'm asking this guy, Hey, can you show me what the weekly looks like? Cause right now this is drama, emergency medical, like this is emergency room stuff in the hospital, the one hour stuff, whereas the weekly and monthlies, dude, it's, it's kind of like takes all that noise out. So I would, that's why I, like people looking at these short term charts, you have to remember it's just an exercise in intelligence, but it should not have anything to do with your long term thesis. You mean you don't like my one minute, Gary? Is that what you're saying? I mean, I like the one second. I like living on the edge. It's entertaining, dude. 
Uh, can I add to that a little bit? Uh, yeah. Just uh, since we have that chart up, my friend, I would like you to kind of take a look because I think he can appreciate it. And I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Bringing a, up, I, I, I'm bringing up the okay. weekly chart right now. I'm bringing up the weekly chart. I'm I'm sending that to the jumbotron as well, right? So just in just uh, probably a minute or two, it will be up. Thank you, my friend. Have you noticed that right now we're at the, uh, just about at the resistance line of, uh, let's see, April 12th, 2021, right? See, because there's a couple things that are different. All of this is taking place pre-having. When we're more accustomed to this taking place pretty much in April, that's where you get the stereotype, sell them, may go away. And then we have a rocking fall into Thanksgiving. That's why a lot of these historical chart bros are calling for the 55 and three quarters retracement like we did in April, right? That's where they come up with those crazy figures that we all know Bitcoin's never going to go to. So when we did 64, we went down to 28, then we shot back up to 69. The point that we're all trying to race to a match now. Now, if you look at the green candle structure and the four hour candle structure of the previous bull, there is not any place in that chart that shows as much green candle volume as we've had in this movement. That is very fact, different. Man. That's very, very different. One looks like Christmas, and the other one looks like a train wreck. It's really interesting. I've never noticed that. Oh, we're losing you a little bit, Gary. I don't know if it's on my side. No, no, I, I, I cut off then. I just said, hey, I never noticed that. I was trying to keep the conversation going, but I wasn't trying to cut you off. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary. You were just breaking up a little bit, but that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm recognizing. So I'm still going to take historical patterns into perspective, but I don't believe it's going to be as deep. So to rewind back to that question, what would you say to a friend? And Chris said, hey, man, I want no problem with the feds. Uh, I've been in crypto for a long time. I got this one figured out. Here it goes. So what I do personally, you see, you like that, guys? You can always open that up. What I do personally is I would take that and split it up into many positions. I would get in line on the order list, right? You can be first on that order list. If you pop in an order list... You better be paying attention if there's a couple hundred thousand people in front of you. You don't want to be on that number. You can just flip it up a little bit, change a dollar, right? And I would fragment it. Why would I fragment it? Because I wouldn't be as visible and I wouldn't be as threatening to the market maker. So, so as I were to stage that, I would go to the bottom point, which I think is not likely, or at least if this takes place, I would be happy. For me, that number is around 48,000. I would tear in my investments accordingly. I would have it preset and ready to execute with a plan, stress-free plan, of an end result average. And you got to do it quick. You don't want to be buying in at 100 Gs. We have an election year coming. They're going to go from playing with our emotions because we have a ton of catalysts, which are not FUD. They're fact. They're coming. They're, they're on their way. And then they're going to magically tell us how great the economy is, magically tell us how great unemployment is, magically cut some interest rates just before the election. So it's going to be really quick. You've got to be quick on your toes. That's why if you have a plan, you preset it, you're ready, you set it, you forget it, right? Just like the cooking commercials. And that's what I would do personally. Yeah, you, you weren't suggesting though a guy with a million dollars could move the market, were you? But, I mean, a guy with a million dollars should be able to walk into this market now, buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, not even touch the market. Not at all. A million dollars, let's see. I, yesterday, somebody, and this is a different asset, but somebody flipped uh, 145. No, no, but I'm talking about know. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely. Yep, yeah, yep. You no, could come in. You could come in with that, but I would like you to end with a result that makes you proud of your accomplishments. Yeah, no, no. I just uh, you you made a comment. Hey, you you want to be stealthy about it? I just think now this market's deep enough now that if you wanted to, uh, listen. This is really an active question because. Tomorrow, I'm going to have access to fiat that I don't have access to today, and I have to make a decision. One, 
I'm about the most convicted human being I've heard of so far about this asset class. Um, and if I have fiat, I'm looking at it for me and my family going, hey, you know, like, how do I deploy this? And it's not a small amount, like it's, you know, a decent amount of money. Um, so these questions are like present and real in my life. They should be present and real in almost everyone's life. If you're looking at this opportunity and you see what I see and Chris sees, I mean, Chris will tell you, okay, ask him what his favorite commodity in the world to follow is and what he would die on his, die on his cane for. Uh, and it's going to be this one. Um, it's just so fascinating. So do I just smash in, uh, do I do a daily? Like, I'm terrified this thing's going to get... Like, in the 50s, I do everything I have. If it hit 59, I mean, the problem is I need to put money on these bloody exchanges to do it. Yeah, so, talk about risk. The risk is when the U.S. dollar is sitting on these exchanges doing nothing. Uh, that's terrifying to me. Uh, I'll see it when you do it too, Gary. I watch yeah. this methodically. 16 hours a day, I'm looking at 12 charts and order lists. 16 hours a day, and I love it. It's the best adult video game God has ever made. Three imagine years what, straight. Imagine what's going to happen when the Wall Street boys, and they're 22, doing Adderall all day long, making 200 grand, to start drilling into this shit, dude. Oh, army of quants. Market's going to change severely. Chris, I, I think you might be like mowing the grass or something. Where are you, bro? <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. No, I just uh, I think the I think the guys are finally done mowing the grass now. But um, but yeah, you know, I, I think you know again um, when we're looking at this, I think for most people, you know, those those shorter time frames um, are just not a great thing for them to be doing. Um, I, I think minimally. Most that are in crypto Twitter should be doing positional trading. So you're kind of getting into a position for a longer haul or investing. I think that'll be the way that they work out most. If if they're honest with themselves, uh, they'll say, "Man, if I had only held during the you know during the last bull market, I'd be up a lot more than I am now when I was trying to trade it without really knowing how." So you know, I, I think Bitcoin is this really fantastic. Um, really intriguing uh, asset class uh, and, and it's and it's you know because it's been so new it's still forgiving right so you could have you could have been in the market for the last five years trying to trade it losing money but you know barely making any money um, and at this point right now at sixty thousand dollars you've still got a great chance to come out really well off at the end of the game um, but you know that I think that window is closing I, I think it is and you know, this is, you know, I talk about my story and how, you know, I lost a lot of money learning to trade the first, you know, four years until I kind of sat down and said, listen, I had to be honest with myself and said, listen, either you're going to have to freaking learn how you, you know, learn to what, what you're supposed to be doing here or just get the hell out of it. Because otherwise, you know, you're not going to spend the rest of your life throwing in, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month throughout the year, um, you know, and just doing that over and over again. You know, you, you have to get to that point where you say, all right, either I'm really serious about learning and that means I'm going to put the money in to learn or I'm really not that serious and I'm just going to go ahead and buy and invest, you know, and just hold it. I, I think you really have to kind of make that decision um, getting up really about now with Bitcoin because if things go like, you know, there, there's such a potential here for price to really run off um, and if it does, you know, you're going to be looking back on here at 63,000, like people that were around in 2017, we're looking back on, you know, two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's tough when, when you haven't been in that and you just kind of get to that point and then you look back and go, damn it. You know, I, I wish I had been more serious about making my decisions about what I'm doing. Next thing you know, your bar stool bets, huh? Exactly, exactly. We, we are a nation, especially here in the U.S., you know, we're a nation of gamblers. Um, me, myself, I'm not a gambler. I've been to Vegas one time in my life, uh, which was during the, um, the Web3 event in October of 2021, I guess it was. Uh, didn't gamble at all while I was there for the four or five days I was there. I just, I just don't. You know, I, I come into the markets, 
uh, I do my thing in there. I don't, you know, it's not gambling. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a real, you know, risk is understood. What I'm doing, you know, some I've been doing for a long time, but yeah, but you know, just man, you got the government pushing, you know, scratch off tickets and whatnot under the guise of, oh, it's helping education. Well, if if there's so much money coming into all this gambling that the states are doing, um, why am I still? If if my kid was going to school, why am I still having to buy a hundred or two hundred dollars worth of school supplies to send with them to school? You know, why why do we have to keep doing that? So. You know, it's a nation of gamblers. Everybody takes advantage of it. Um, you have to kind of decide, you know what, I'm not ready to be a gambler anymore. I want to get out of there. I want to get some real investment going. And then you figure out, okay, the big question to say is, well, you know what? If I don't do this today, where am I going to be in three years anyway or five years anyway? I'm going to be doing the same thing I'm doing right now. So, you know, when you look at, well, should I invest? Well, I mean, yeah. At least it gives you an opportunity to be doing something different, you know, five years down the road or more. Otherwise, you're just doing the same thing. You don't have any kind of, you know, different off ramp really going there. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Chris. I despise gambling. I really do. As funny as that sounds after kind of giving my brief little description of how much I love crypto. Um, and I think it's important for the people in the audience to recognize anything that you hear you can extract little pieces of it and tailor fit it to your lifestyle. Not everybody can spend endless amount of time in front of charts. Not everybody can constantly be here on X trying to keep up with the meta. So, so whatever your plan is, please don't sacrifice your family. Don't sacrifice what's providing for them now, which is AKA your job, what we hope to replace someday with AKA retirement. But it's very important to tailor fit a strategy to your lifestyle. I can't express that more. I, I agree with that hundred percent. I wanted to say something for Gary, cause it sounds like he's, I just, that's something that I was thinking about. I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, when should we get in? And that's, that's good to think about, but I don't hear enough people talking about exit strategies also, cause it's just as important on how you exit this market. I've seen several market cycles now, uh, I regret that I didn't get in heavily on the first one I've seen. Um, but when I say exiting is important, you dollar cost average out also, just like you do in. Um, for example, if now he was talking about charts earlier. 50K was always an important number to me. I was wondering what was going to happen at 50K. If we got too much resistance there, I thought it would be a while before we hit it again. We blew right through it. We have yet to come back and test it to, to show support. I would really like to see that happen. So I would be putting orders around that, that area. He said 48 is a great one, um, but people are going to front run that. If we hit 50K and then bounce, it's who knows what's going to happen. We showed support there. It's obviously going to hold. Uh, that, then that's off to the races. Uh, now, if we blew straight up from here, I'd be dollar cost averaging. I'd be selling the whole way up because the faster you go up, the faster you come down. And you probably won't have time to sell uh, by the time you notice it's coming down. So you really got to pay attention to how fast this market moves too. Uh, and the volatility will uh, subside as time goes by, as this market, market, uh, as this industry kind of matures a little bit. In the next 10 years, we're, like he said earlier, we're going to have a 3% move is going to be a big one. Um, now that's just going to take time. But dark, figuring out how to exit properly and responsibly is also important. I just wanted to make a comment about that, that's all. I mean, they think we can all agree it's an opportunity of a lifetime, right? And most everyone in this room just wants you to be part of it because we all deserve something better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we were trying, you know, trying to get the word out, trying to say, okay, listen, this is why you should probably be in here, or most people anyway, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, people are going to continue to be emotional. They're going to continue to be scared and and, you know, it's all human responses, but um, I think, you know, you kind of figure out at one point, you know, what is it that you're looking to achieve, you know, in the future? What is it, what are your goals? Where are you headed? And then you look and you go, okay, as far as, you know, wealth goals go, um, I, I don't know, man. You know, again, I've been doing this almost 30 years. It's, I'm hard-pressed to find a better asset class to actually be involved in, um, you know, to hit those, those um 
though there's you know there's there's, there's longer term kind of wealth goals and whatnot. Uh, let me see what do we got here. Pharmacist. I see you got your hand up. What you got to say there? Yeah, yeah. GM GM Gary got in and GM Christopher. Um, what I can actually say is that it has actually been a very very beautiful conversation all this while. And I think that this is a time of our life that um, Bitcoin has just actually hit about sixty nine thousand US today. And you know, a lot of people have actually been doubting Bitcoin since the bottom of fifteen k. Saying Bitcoin is actually okay, man. Out. You need to speak into your microphone better. Okay, we're losing you. Whatever you're okay. doing with your phone, speak. Okay, speak Gary, can better. you can you actually hear me properly now? Much better, my man. Much better. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what I what I actually say is that I actually stand with Gary on this on the on, on everything he has been saying. And Bitcoin, this is a time of our life right now. And you know what what we actually see on the on the chat today that Bitcoin is actually dropping. That's actually just on the one hour time frame, guys. That's just on the one hour time frame. If you actually zoom out, you actually look into the market, you're definitely going to see that the market has actually been on an uptrend for months now. And there is nothing actually stopping Bitcoin at this levels, right? And, you know, the fact that Bitcoin actually just hit the, the all-time high before the Bitcoin halving, because Bitcoin has never hit the, the all-time high before the halving before, I actually think that this is actually a great sign that a whole lot of money is actually coming into crypto for, into um, crypto and Bitcoin from the traditional finance, like, you know, the Web2, right? With the, with the signing of the, of the Bitcoin ETF, it only shows that a whole lot of money would actually be pumping into the crypto market. And I'm sure that a lot of huge capitalists and um, investors are actually waiting for uh, after the Bitcoin halving, right? And, you know, I just believe that, you know, since the time I actually came into crypto, since about 2017 to now, when Bitcoin was actually about 3005 and I bought my first Bitcoin then since now, it has actually been up. I haven't actually invested any money since that time into crypto up to date. I've actually just been moving up and down, you know, from one ecosystem to another, you know, exploring crypto in general. But I understand that there are a lot of whales right now looking at what, what to do, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Because, you know, Bitcoin is actually at a very critical point. Is Bitcoin going to 40K? Is Bitcoin going to 30K? But I, I actually want to, I actually want the people who are actually looking into the market at this point to understand that, you know, look at the bright side. Look at the the next couple of months, the next couple of years. What what would you be doing after all this time? What would you be doing next year? What would you be doing next two years? When Bitcoin is actually hitting and soaring to a new high, possibly 100,000, 200,000. When you actually check the people who are actually emotionally glued to crypto. These are people who are actually um, um, more of gamblers. They are actually more of like, oh, I want to use 100x and pull out a million dollars. I want to be I want to be rich over that. I want to put a hundred thousand dollars in in a futures position, and you can liquidate it like very very easy because that that aspect is actually supposed to be meant for experts. You understand people who understand the Wall Street games and people who understand the the figures and all of that. But you know, since I've come into crypto, I I definitely do um futures trading at times. But trust me, I have actually made more from holding. Right from buying this asset, which is crypto, Ethereum, man, you know, blah blah blah, and all the rest. I've actually made more. You know, it has actually changed my life. I came into crypto poor, and you know, I've actually been able to grow up to now, which right now I'm actually having an audience of over seventy four thousand people since that time. I had to learn the process. I'm learning. I'm still moving, making connections, and move in the space. And that, it's all because of crypto. It's all because of Bitcoin. I mean, I'm actually on this space with top chats like Gary Cardone, Christopher. Like, these are people halfway across the world. And this is all because of Bitcoin and crypto and everything. So, there are lots of, there are lots of advantage of crypto and Bitcoin outside just buying and trading on futures market. A whole lot of traders you see saying, oh, I made 10,000% in less than 24 hours. These guys might have just used $40 in, in trading. I do it a lot. You I can just be, okay, $10. 10,000% and that's all but when you actually come in with big money and you actually you actually look at what crypto has actually done what bitcoin has done since months from 15,000 to about 69,000 that's more than 200% guys more than 200% I don't see your bank giving you more than 10% a month with charges and all of it 
You understand? But you know, you when you actually look at the bright side, when you have held in your in your holdings account without leverage trading, without opening those hundred, two hundred X, you just buy you you just hold your your Bitcoin asset and you just say, okay, let's see what how it goes, Abibi. You would you you would have been at a very good position. Two months ago or three months ago, Bitcoin was just about thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars today is sixty nine thousand dollars. You want to wait at hundred thousand dollars to start asking Gary? Gary, is this the top? Why don't you buy this top? And you know you understand. <laughs> you gotta understand if hundred k is gonna be the top. You know, I I feel that I feel that with this Bitcoin halving that's coming, we might definitely see a, a, a little crash in the market. That that might be for sure. We might actually see a little bit of crash in the market with the next with the Bitcoin having come in in about four to five days, right? And we might actually see a crash. But are you actually gonna be glued to that crash, or are you gonna be glued to the opportunities that could actually spring from that time? But if you actually open an leverage position right now, whether short or long, bro. You actually, you know, you've actually put yourself in a bad position. If you actually um, long in trading or whatever, and you're not an expert, you're following, you know, people on the timeline. That's a very bad position. But if you're in the spot position, you 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 might be on the good side. You understand? Because the spot guys, trust me, guys, the spot guys have actually made more money than the people who are actually opening leverage. I know a lot of traders actually do make money from leverage. Trust me, bro. They make a million dollars. Trust me, they made a couple of dollars. I saw a guy, you know, on Twitter, <laughs> bulled up BNB. He, he actually lost a million dollars on on a on a on a shot. But he also made a, a whole lot of money on a long. You understand? Those are people who already understand their emotions. They already understand your bag. They have big portfolio. But when you don't have a lot, you just have a million dollars. You just have a hundred. You just have ten thousand. You want to actually be on the holding side. You understand? You actually want to be on the holding side. I understand how well, to. Uh, my man, I agree with you. I think holding is a. Uh awesome awesome strategy uh you brought up a really good point and i'd like chris to speak to it if he if he if he can the futures market out may june july is still trading at a premium and chris could you explain to the market what uh, the the group what that means like people what people will be doing in real terms today yeah uh, to make money on that trade yeah exactly so you know guys when when you've got your future uh, your futures market when that's trading, you know, ahead of um, of what of what the spot price is, right? So basically, what you're saying is, uh, future price of Bitcoin, uh, they expect it to be higher, right? And the reason why this happens is, you know, when when you've got the bigger players, especially in there, and they're kind of like taking a lot of things into consideration. They're maybe taking in their own size and what they're doing into consideration. They're taking in the ETFs and the flows there. What's going on with there and and they're saying, you know what? Listen, I believe that um, that price is going to continue higher. And what that does is that ends up leading your uh, spot market. So you know, you really want to pay attention to these things. You really want to pay attention. Uh, you know, if if you want to go into that where you're looking at the futures market, and it says, okay, well, uh, you know, you've got this higher price in that futures market than what you've got in your spot market. Well, the the one thing I'm really not looking at at that point. Is shorting right i'm really not looking to to go short in it and and i think even when we think about that i think even a better general rule guys is zoom out to your larger time frame zoom out to like your weekly and trade in the direction of the trend don't get shaken out by the daily whatever happens on the daily or whatever keep the bigger time frame in in um in mind and if you've got an uptrend on the weekly you should be looking to buy the um the pullbacks right you're not looking to short the tops you're looking to buy the pullbacks as long as the trend is continuing up that's what you want to do if, if the market's heading down like it was for a bear market for a year there and you're making lower lows then generally speaking you should be looking to sell the the rejections not really buy the uh you know the bounces there now you can do the other thing if you've got the experience to do so but the reality is, you know, most people don't, and they're not honest with themselves about it. And instead of being more humble and saying, listen, I probably shouldn't do that because my skill set isn't there. I need to do this other thing so I can recognize greater returns over a longer period of time. You know, that, that's what you're trying to do. But yeah, you know, one of the things you can definitely do is to keep watching those futures. You know, are the futures trading, you know, higher than what, than what spot price is? And if it is, if you're going to short, I think you need to be a very, very short-term short. I mean, uh, you know, 
it's got to be very just like in the moment kind of thing because you know the odds are spot price is going to pull up toward that contango you know again if, if futures prices are ahead of of um of um spot prices it's called contango if future prices are below spot price they're expecting lower prices in the future that's called backwardation and basically again your your spot is going to try to follow that path so if your futures are lower than then you should expect generally that the price is going to come lower in spot. So definitely something to, you know, if you want a little bit of extra kind of something you can watch on there, uh, that is something that, that you should pay attention to. Don't, don't see it out there. Don't see that the futures are ahead and go, oh, man, we need to have some big, huge pullback here, some longer-term reset. Um, a lot of times when people are talking about price has to do this or price has to do that, price needs to pull back, price needs to reset, these are really emotional words. These are emotional responses uh, because as I continue to tell people, you know, the market only has to do whatever it's going to do. But we as human beings start getting nervous when it doesn't do what we expect it to do. And then we go in there and we start telling it what it needs to do. And if you can understand at the point that you actually start telling the market what it needs to do, that's a good indication, you know, that, that you're more aware of your emotions and what's going on. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's part of being human. You're going to be fearful. You're going to make mistakes. Um, you're going to try and tell the market what it needs to do. Uh, you know, just, you know, the, I, I post sometimes here, I share things about, you know, like the, the EU over there, the central bank and how they said, you know, Bitcoin, you know, has a value of zero and then it kind of broke out into all time highs, right? A week later. But you know, it, people do this at, at all stages, you know, and sometimes if it's more public, they might have ulterior motives. They might be trying to, you know, um, flood the market or something. But at the end of the day, most of the time, it's, it's just human emotion. And so just be careful with that out there.